Great Britain, what a past five years it's been. From producing some of the best talents in the world to reforming the team for the 2012 London Olympics to now voting for Brexit. A construct that not only has its implications politically, but on the Premier League itself. Today, for the second year running, we're applying the concept to our transfer policy and career mode with the Emmers of West End. Welcome to the FIFA 21 Brexit Rebuild Challenge. If you're unfamiliar with the challenge, we're only allowed to sign players from England, Scotland, Northern Ireland and Wales, simultaneously selling every non-British player at the club with our main overarching goal of achieving Champions League success. Let's get straight to it. We start out our journey here at West Ham at the London Stadium just because I decided why not. They start off with a decent English core for us to operate with. From Mikel Antonio up front to Declan Rice, the brand new captain, the Irishman turned English. They've even got some Scottish representation in there with Snodgrass. I've assembled our best non-foreign starting 11, British only besides Cardozo and Diop in the back line. This would be our strongest team we'd be able to field if we only had UK players. In terms of formation though, you know I've just got to switch things up right now. Tactically, it just doesn't work with our current setup. It really doesn't align with our future plans either to transform West Ham. The tactical setup includes pressure on heavy touch and offensive style or fast build up. This is the kind of football I want these lads to start getting engraved into their heads. On a strong, positive outlook on the way we play, headed into the season as we go out into the transfer market in order to strengthen this squad as much as possible. We're currently working with a transfer budget of about £72 million, so just the right amount in order to get some business done, get some deals over the line, and for Sir BCHD to work his magic. I also want to include as many different nations as possible out of the four. I just don't want it to be an all-English squad. We'll chuck in some Welsh and Scottish talent. I'm sorry, Northern Ireland, but you've really not helped me make a case to sign any one of your players, but we'll give it a shot. One footballer back with a brand new look. Overhauling the football news app we all know and love. Stay up to date with all the latest news, scores and transfers the footballing world has to offer. You can even customize your viewing experience by following all the players and clubs your heart desires. If you're like me and support more than one team, this feature is a lifesaver. Make sure you download the app for free using my link in the description. Don't worry, it's available on Apple and Android so you can receive your footy news fix on the go 24-7. Get downloading people, one football, remember the name. We're kicking off our tenure here at West Ham in a quite underwhelming manner. Our first signing, first piece of business is just a player that needed to be got. We've just spent £30 million to bring John Stones from City to West Ham. The now 26-year-old fixes one of our problem areas at the back, needing a centre half, and he just plugs straight into our starting eleven. If it's anything West Ham are known for over the years, it's their stunning youth academy and their ability to produce talent after talent domestically. So we've opted to continue the legacy here at the London Stadium by by bringing in Billy Gilmore for a cheap £5 million, a Scottish midfielder. I hope dynamic potential is on his side and he can grow into an absolute monster to take over the middle of the park. He's a Scottish candidate that can represent his country with pride in this team and I'm sure West Ham will welcome him with open arms. I don't know how we've managed to pull this off, but we have secured a bargain. We've completely finessed Schalke as we pick up one of their bright, promising stars, the Welshman Rabi Matonzo, shockingly under his value for a fee of £2.7 million of the German outfit and he is now worth 3.7 mil. There's a glitch in the matrix and so BCHD is exploiting it somehow. The 19 year old still needs to grow and develop. I feel like a place here at West Ham is the perfect scenario for the youngster to really grow into his own and to become a bright and upcoming star for Britain FC. It's important. We snatched him up early. You know what's going to happen. So BCHD made him a high priority. It is Mason Greenwood arriving from Manchester United for 25.2 million pounds. Now back in the day, the Red Devils were notorious for poaching some of West Ham's best talent like Rio Ferdinand. Now, how the tables have turned, we welcome home our brand new number 15 down south. He's a signing for the long term. If we let him get any better over at United, we probably wouldn't have been able to afford him in the future. To a default EA, unfaced scanned Mason Greenwood, welcome to Brexit FC. As much as we love our signings, it was time for a few departures. We had to get rid of some deadwood in order to free up some space in our transfer budget. It's Angelo Ogbonna, the long-serving hammer for 6.7 million pounds. Jose Mourinho seen fit to bring in the Italian. He's joining the North Londoners on a permanent basis. The 32-year-old Italian is from the same region my family's from in Italy, so that's my little connection to Angelo Ogbonna. The press, though, have kind of swept this one under the rug. It's the Kiwi, Winston Reid. He departs the club for 3.85 million pounds, headed to the German second division to play for FC Cologne. We also have to part ways with a South American duo headed out the door. Manuel Lanz 
Lanzini, the Argentine, making a move to AC Milan for 20.35 million pounds, one of our most expensive sales yet. And the Paraguayan Fabian Balbuena making the move to Monaco for 4.85 million pounds. We've sold Spurs Ogbonna, now we have tried to get back at them as we pick up Ben Davies for 23.4 million pounds. He's mainly a left back, but what I'm planning to do with him is actually convert him into a centre back, so he's partnering John Stones. It might be a plan destined for failure, but we're going to try it out nonetheless. It was time to go for our fan favourite Congolese left back, Arthur Masuaku. He is venturing out to Portugal, playing for Porto now, as they spend 13.15 million pounds on the now 26 year old. A transfer that needed to be done, we needed to free up some funds in order to pursue some new deals. With a Sebastian Haller deal in the works in order for him to transfer to Liverpool, we had to call up the backup brigade and bring home Noni Madueke out of PSV for a cheap 5.1 million pounds. There's a strong emphasis on the teenage British talents right now and he could be a potential partner up top with Miguel Antonio. The club's new number 17, such a typical West Ham player, added not long ago in FIFA 20 with a brand new face scan as well. He's a prime talent, an exciting prospect to join British FC. I told you lot, I gave you a little sneak peek that Sebastian Haller, the French striker, might be departing the club and it's Jurgen Klopp who seek these services. Liverpool's brand new number 16 for 43.2 million pounds. We managed to squeeze as many pennies out of the German manager as possible. Such a great deal there. We get so much in return and I'm gracious that Merseyside came calling allowing us to do a few more deals before the summer window's over. Typically what are one of my first few actions of a rebuild is to shore up in between the sticks to get a trusty number one and a safe pair of hands. This time around we have opted for a future England number one. It is Dean Henderson playing second fiddle at Manchester United. Come on over down to London and he is going to be our brand new number one for hopefully the rest of the rebuild. In a complicated deal that took a lot to get over the line, we had to include Felipe Anderson plus 25.279 million pounds on top of it. I think it was worth it considering how much of a long-term player he's going to be for the squad. The media are hailing our transfer policy and just what we've been able to achieve so far in this window. They're saying we've grabbed a bargain, but it wouldn't be possible without the selling of players and that is public for now as he makes the departure over to Wolves, a fellow Premier League club for 33.7 million pounds. One of the most technically gifted players at West Ham right now. He's got the flair, he's got that special something about him. The 24 year old out the exit door and is going to be playing his football at the Molyneux. It's yet another routine foreign departure and this time it is Andriy Yarmolenko, the Ukrainian right midfielder. He's transcended into a pretty mediocre player that our 30 year old, he's entering that part of his career in career mode. His overall and attributes just plummet and we've managed to score squeeze 10.2 million pounds out of him as Ajax have signed him on a three year deal. In the aftermath of an abundance of quick fire sales, it's left us with a healthy chunk of cash and that we've invested into our defense for 63.6 million pounds. We're one click away from signing Joe Gomez. He puts pen to paper, signs on the dotted line and he's joining Sir BCHD here at West Ham in the British Revolution happening here in London. It's our most expensive signing to date. If he avoids the injuries, the captain surely has future captain potential. It's been a hectic summer transfer period, a season for transition. We need to implement our new regime under Sir PCHD. The British only revolution is just getting started as we've spent upwards of 180 million pounds and sold a profit of over 136 mil. With players coming in and going out, there has been a lot of squad turnover, but it's for the better as it marks a brand new era. Here is how the starting 11 is playing out right now. We've got the Antonio Madueke situation up top, nearly an almost brand new midfield and brand new defense with Dean Henderson keeping it down in between the sticks. Maybe, who knows, we could push for Europa League qualification. Let's get season one up and running. Here's how our fate played out in the Premier League this season with the top half of the table finish just squeezing in ninth. For our goal difference, we've made it up the charts, but yeah, we're still far away from that European qualification, so something to stride towards in season two as Liverpool win back their league title, United, City and Wolves all in the top four. It sees West Brom, Crystal Palace and Leeds United or be downgraded to the second tier. Check it in on the FA Cup and how have we gone on to do this then? The Amers, despite not qualifying for Europe by the league format with an FA Cup victory 2-1 in a London derby at Wembley over Chelsea. It has been a fairy tale season for the Amers. Come on you Irons then. 2-1 victory. Brexit football prevails not only that beating Spurs in the semis 2-1 and against Millwall. They have slayed the majority of their London rivals towards an FA Cup Cup final victory. The first time since God knows when, West Ham have won the FA Cup. We could have repeat that same
15 feet in the Carabao Cup, not even making it through to the quarterfinals, getting eliminated 3-1 to Leicester. Taking a glance at our top performers in Season 1, your FA Cup champions, it is actually Mason Greenwood racking up 51 appearances, 10 goals and 13 assists for the teenager, growing an unbelievable plus 5 up to an 82. He has shown real quality and proven that he doesn't need the big world-class talents around him. A similar situation goes with Noni Madueke, 10 goals and 4 assists for the young Englishman playing as a striker. I assume they rotated between right mid and striker. Greenwood though, the only player to accomplish double figures in both goals and assists. Michael Antonio, another one of our players with the double digits. The options in terms of goal scoring we have, like even Jared Bowen, Suchek got in the mix, but he will be on the chopping block come season two. Even Billy Gilmore going up a plus three with four goals and seven assists. Matondo on the left, gotta be ecstatic with such a young and upcoming squad, knowing that they've even managed to win silverware with a young captain like Declan Rice at 22. This has shown major promising signs for the future. What a pickup he was. 20 clean sheets in 48 appearances. You can't ask for much more. Definitely some more problem areas we need to look into improving come the start of season two as the Brexit rebuild continues to strive for greatness. The British boys are going to be put to the test next season, battling on multiple fronts domestically and continentally in the Europa League. So bring it on. Not to start this season off on a low-key depressing note, we have three player departures. They're leaving the club on a free and that includes Mark Noble, the fan favourite captain cult hero. He's agreed to join Lask as we move on down. It is Snodgrass, the Scotsman, now over at Watford in the championship. And one of our MVPs from last season, Mikel Antonio. He was up there scoring 10 goals with Greenwood and Matty Weke, but it was time to move on. And he has taken his career to Turkey for the Shakhtar here. It was unfortunate we couldn't make any cash off them and they're all British boys, but it had to be done. It was an executive decision. It's purely business. Gifted with a war chest of over a hundred million pounds to spend, we have gone out and poached one of Manchester United United talents once more. It is Aaron Vambi Saka, definitely a different breed from the likes of Mason Greenwood in season one, but it's 80 million pounds dropped on the English right back. You just know he's taken that starting right back spot by the scruff of the neck and he instantly improves our back line the second he steps in it. It's an 80 bomb, it's our most expensive transfer today. Aaron Wamba Saka, welcome to the London Stadium. I've also scoured the free agency for any British talent on the loose and just ready to be picked up, and it's Damari Gray of all people. You probably haven't heard his name in a while, but Leicester decided to let him go and he needed employment. Why not take him under our wing? He's on a free. It's not going to matter if he booms or busts anyway. He's just here for the ride. With the news of Wamba Saka's arrival, we sold our two aging 28-year-old and pretty mediocre right-backs, even including an Englishman in there, Ryan Fredericks. He moves to buy Leverkusen for £10.7 million and it's Vladimir Kufau making the switch to Ajax for 15.4. With Thomas Suchek being one of our main performers and stars of our season one. He had to go this time around and it just continues our culling of all the non-British players. It's going to take some time, but we are slowly phasing them out of the club and for £64.6 .6 million, pounds, I couldn't turn this down from Real Madrid. Again, we squeezed every single penny out of Zinedine Zidane's pocket and they grabbed their next Galactico. All is good financially now as we have a fat transfer budget to work with. Right now, we have to welcome the arrival of Reese James from Chelsea. Yes, again, we're poaching of our London rivals and again we have to replenish this right back position after just getting rid of Fredericks and Kufau he was the man for the job the Englishman 39.3 million pounds he cost us but what I also love about him he's so versatile I can play at right back and CDM so if he needs to put a shift in midfield Kufau just left as well he can do two things at the same time he's a man that can do it both he's multifaceted and he's still young with heaps of room to grow and that's why he's here playing for Brexit FC you have to see it to believe it we have acquired our first non-Englishman since season one's transfer window. That is Gareth Bale. The Welshman arrives back in the Premier League after his loan stint at Spurs. They didn't make the deal permanent and allowed us to swoop in £30 million for the 32-year-old. Yes, I know we probably overpaid for him due to his current ability and current form. He probably doesn't really deserve a spot in this starting eleven or in the team in general, but you have to. He's one of Wales' best players in the last decade or so. You can't say no to the man, but a Premier League icon. What my plans are for him is starting him out on the right with Greenwood push towards a striker positioning as we are training him to be a striker with his development plans. He could just provide that little bit of experience and be that dressing room leader we all know this young and upcoming squad need to thrive. Welcome back to the right side of London, Gareth Bale. Oh lads, I knew I was desperate in defence, but I didn't think this desperate. England really lacking defenders or just Britain as a whole because our only viable option for quality right now is Harry Maguire, the fridge, good old slabhead. I know he's a meme in real life, I know people love to hate on him, but we just need to get him in. He needs to do a job.
Rob. He's not really gonna start. He's just gonna be a solid backup. Don't hate me for this one. We just need the squad depth and the quality to allow us to compete. Oh no, we don't even have the funds to pull it off. We're gonna have to raise some funds somewhere. Oh, this is gonna be a pain if this falls through because we've included Issa Diop throughout the move. So it's a swap deal with money on top of it. 38.6 million pounds and it's all fallen to pieces. Throughout all that, under the radar, we've managed to sell Darren Randolph, the Irish goalkeeper. The shot stopper now is gonna be playing his football over at Norwich for 1 million pounds. This is one of my least favorite things about these uh, nation specific or region specific rebuilds this year is that for the swap deals, we're getting such a good deal here from Bayer Leverkusen, 10 million pounds plus Paulinho, but they don't have any British players. So we just have to flat out reject it. Plus I wouldn't get rid of Jared Bowen anyway. That's just an example. We've had to sacrifice one of our own in order to bring in Harry Maguire. It is Aaron Cresswell, a Hammers long serving player now. He's been at the club for quite a while. The Englishman now to pass for the Women's League up for a fee of 7.5 million pounds and the now 31 year old left back. You just know his career is headed in that downwards trajectory. So he just needed to be another one on the chopping block this season. One Englishman out the door, one Englishman in and that perfectly accommodates us for good old Harry Maguire. Yes, I know we've signed quite a lot of United players, about three so far throughout this rebuild. Let's pray that Slaved is the bottom of the barrel. He is our last Manchester United pickup for a fee of 38.6 million pounds. Plus the swap deal of Issa Diop. Welcome. Please don't make any defensive mistakes, the likes of what you've done for United. Otherwise, we're probably going to terminate your contract, lad. In what was a productive and efficient transfer window, we spent over 187.9 million pounds on an abundance of players, some top quality, a few varying characters in the mix as we made a profit of 99.2 million pounds. That is how we're going to say goodbye to the summer transfer window of August 2021 to kickstart season two. Here is a starting 11 for their second campaign. Let's cross our fingers and hope for no second season syndrome. We've got Greenwood converted into a striker. Gareth Bale starting off on the right. Wamba Saka upgrades that right back spot and we are ready and roaring to go. In what was an unexpected end to a riveting season, we were three points away from a title win. You know, I had to take it home with 84 points as the Brexit boys finish in fourth, qualifying for Champions League football in season three. What a run out, what a display. The Amers are flexing their British homegrown muscle. You really do love to see it finishing above the likes of Arsenal and Spurs. Our transfer business came into action this season and getting relegated was Nottingham Forest, Stoke City and Blackburn Rovers from the championship. They're going back down. In another random unexpected silverware victory, it was the Community Shield won at Wembley in a five goal thriller against Liverpool 3-2. In the FA Cup, they couldn't defend their crown and recreate that miracle run like last year. In round six, they were knocked out 2-1 to Manchester City. The Carabao Cup saw no kind of success in round four. They were knocked out to a championship level Watford 1-0. Oh, we could have had a double on our hands and our first European trophy. It was Tottenham to get their revenge after a 3-3 draw in the final. A six-goal thriller saw Spurs and Jose Mourinho's men win 4-3 on penalties in a London derby that would have been exhilarating as they beat out Arsenal to the final. They took down Stad Rene and only ended up finishing second in Group D. This season was a lot about firsts. It was our first season in Europe, Mason Greenwood's first season at striker, and he has taken the lead. He's run away with this new position. We've struck gold here with this position change and avoiding spending nine figures on a brand new world-class striker with 65 appearances has produced 39 goals and nine assists. Spectacular stuff, 48 goal contributions. What can't this man do? One of two players to achieve both double figures in goals and assists. It is Noni Madueke with 17 goals and 12 assists, 29 goal contributions. Damari Gray, all right then. He was a free agent at the start. I wasn't expecting to do much this season, but he has come out with 16 goals and five assists. Looks like he was one of the main starters or just a backup off the bench. I'm impressed. You should be too as Rabi Matonzo now up to an 82 overall, getting a plus six this season, 15 goals and 12 assists for the Welshman. He's been one of our best hidden gem signings of all time, alongside Billy Gilmore now up to a 78 overall, partnering Rice in the midfield. He scored eight goals and five assists this season, outperforming his partner and the likes of Gareth Bale, who's gone down a minus three. That's got to hurt, but he's still 80 rated. The Welshman coming into the squad quite late into his career. Declan Rice now up to an 84 overall, scoring three goals and four assists, looking towards the goalkeeping spot and just backing up last season exactly the same with 20 clean sheets. Squad depth and quality is a serious question mark though as we transition into the Champions League. Season 3 is going to demand so much more out of these players. So your British rebuild is going to be pushed to its limits and we already have some of our transfer targets in the shop window right there just staring at us for Season 3. It is going to be one of our most gargantuan seasons to date and I can't wait. You know what? Let's slowly transition our way into our transfer business. I want to kick things off with just another free agent pickup. Nothing too drastic, nothing too major. It is Alex McCarthy, former Premier League 
League number one. I forgot who he played for now. I think it was Crystal Palace, the 77 rated 32 year old, just to bump up the squad numbers and participate as an emergency backup. For all you Northern Irish that have stuck around in suspense awaiting for me to sign a Northern Irish player, now is your time to shine. Pop open the champagne, start your celebrations now because we have sealed the deal for Jamal Lewis. For 22.5 million pounds, we've secured the services of the 24 year old from Newcastle United. It just adds a bit more depth and just variety to our back line because he's probably the first and the only, let's face it, representative that's going to be from Northern Ireland. I don't think I could have gone and forgiven myself for not going ahead and signing Jude Bellingham throughout one stage of this rebuild as the now new number 18 joins us here for £10 million. Pounds. It's a pretty cheap deal, a bargain for the 19 year old. We're bringing him back to England and he is now playing for the all British West Ham. A solid safe investment as he's still an exciting prospect and won't start ahead of Gilmore so he's hoping to turn a new leaf here at the London Stadium. Can you feel it? It's the sign of another landmark arrival and one of our most expensive deals to date. It is Phil Foden from Manchester City. Yes, we've switched it up. We're no longer stealing from the red side of Manchester. We are poaching some of the citizens best talents here for 63.9 million pounds. He is going to be an attacking force in midfield, eager to be brought off the bench or even makes a case for starting. A Champions League quality performer. He ticks all the boxes and Phil Foden still only 22. Now for the creme de la creme. It is our magnum opus transfer deal. We've waited a while, but it's Jaden Sancho. You just know we had to. Delivers that automatic world-class quality and for 116 million pounds plus Jared Bowen. Borussia Dortmund agreed and said, hey, we'll take that. So we're just going to accept the offer. And it's a Borussia Dortmund double sweep of Jude Bellingham and Jaden Sancho, bringing them back to where they truly belong. Oh yes, yes, yes. Jaden Sancho agrees the terms and I just can't wait to see him in action in this squad. I think he's going to really raise the bar and take everyone up to his level. That's the kind of impact he's going to have. It's the all British West Ham who grab a hold of England's golden boy. It's been a window defined by our statement of intent. This is a real benchmark. We have laid the foundations of a Champions League contending side and potentially for the Premier League as well. 212.4 million pounds of brand new players arriving and zero profit just because Bowen was part of that Sancho trade deal. We've set the record straight and on deadline day we are fire blazing our way through to season three. We couldn't be more ready if we tried and look at that. All of our starting 11 pretty much besides Madueke have been called up to the national team. If Lucky's on our side again this campaign we might well and truly be on our way. Well 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 would you look at that Premier League champions you betcha with 91 points the Amers have climbed to the top of world football thanks to the help of some extraordinary British talent and now have conquered all of England finishing above the likes of Spurs, Manchester City and Liverpool who just didn't even put together a title race to be fair it was just front runners from the start to the end and it's Crystal Palace, Leeds and West Brom all getting relegated. Now in terms of the other competitions yes they took the FA Cup out for the second time in this rebuild securing a 1-0 win over Liverpool at Wembley they just love winning against the Reds there. In the Carabao Cup Liverpool won that 1-0 over Arsenal but our West Ham they were knocked out in the early rounds it was a 2-0 defeat to Burnley in round three. Now, I don't know if I'm tripping or I, I just don't even know. Did I read the table wrong or something? Because we're not in the Champions League despite finishing fourth last season. You all saw it. Yeah, we didn't get a Champions League spot for last season. We didn't even get Champions League qualifiers. We got put into the Europa League again for the second season running. You can just see we outclassed our opponents in Group K. Round 32, we decimated Porto 7-1 on Aguilera. And in the round of 16, saw the end of us because it was a 3-1 defeat to Wolves on Aguilera. It was an all-English affair and we couldn't salvage anything in the continental competition. That really baffled me, to be honest. I have no idea why we weren't involved in the Champions League. It's probably just a glitch or I'm reading something wrong. Let me know down in the comments below. But EA, they're back at it again. It took me off guard, I'm not going to lie, but I'm happy we ended up taking home the league with Mason Greenwood again being our highest goal scorer and now at a 91 overall with 30 goals and 7 assists. This man is unstoppable. He might not have a real face, but boy oh boy, he's a real talent. Moving on down to Rabi Matsonzo, the Welshman. He's showing up for the aging Gareth Bale, proven to be even better with 16 goals and 13 assists, now at 22, with an 85 overall, it was a plus three season for him, Noddy Madueke, up top, he's loving life with Mason Greenwood, 13 goals and one assist, Damari Gray again, he's just been the hot shot that no one saw coming, an underperformer that flies under the radar, and thank God I decided to pull the trigger on the free agent, because who knows where we'd be, and Jaden Sancho, the man who we spend all that money on, only managed to conjure up 11 goals and 12 assists, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt, considering it's his first season in the Premier League. I'm expecting those numbers to rise in Season 4. Phil Foden off the bench with 9 goals and 2 assists. Declan Rice managed to secure 6 goals and 5. The captain, Davies and Wambasaka from wing-backs managed a few goals as well as Gareth Bell off the bench who has now hit a minus 5. 
this man's career is fallen off a cliff. And it's Billy Gilmore, now the Scotsman at an 80 overall. Here's Dean Henderson with his most clean sheets captured to date with 27 this season and 56 appearances. You can't complain too much about that. Finally, the British Revolution at West Ham can prove themselves in the Champions League, Europe's best competition in season four. Enough waiting. It is now time for them to launch themselves onto the European stage. And in season four, the world is their oyster. Let's see if West Ham can pull off Mission Impossible. It's come to my utter disappointment that in season four, Gareth Bale has hung up the boots and has called it a day. I'm gutted I didn't pick up on it in season three's recap. He must have been demotivated after that minus five to his overall. Now he's no longer in our game and he's left his footballing career behind. In order to honor the Welshman's legacy, we've approached Dan James from Manchester United for 33 million pounds and in a replacement sense as well, he arrives and signs on the dotted line, headed down from Manchester and yet again, United just supplying the goods, our brand new number 20, welcome to the London Stadium. It would be a genuine crime if we didn't manage to sign the best Scottish player in the world right now and in the game at this current stage. Andy Robertson joins the fight. I know we've already won the Premier League, but we're poaching and stealing some world-class talent off some title rivals. We had to pay a world-class 82 million pounds for the Scotsman. It always feels good to upgrade the wing-back spots because they're a luxury position. And finally, we can welcome Robertson to the squad. In a further fight to increase our Welsh intake, we have acquired the services of Aaron Ramsey, the now 32-year-old. Picked him up on a bit of a cheap for 23.6 million pounds. Not essential to the team. He's not going to cause all that much more difference. Just another squad rotational player to add to the side. He's going to provide that experience and he's going to be a wise head in the locker room, which is what this young and upcoming squad need. Any veteran that wants to come join us is always a good thing. I was forced to sign up our trusty free agent second backup goalkeeper, Alex McCarthy. The 33-year-old didn't realize we only signed him on a one-year deal, providing the now 33-year-old employment again. Buki Osaka is that type of wonder kid I just feel like we need in this team. Such an upcoming generational talent that Arsenal have produced. Technically, he's arriving from Atalanta. He made the venture out into Serie A and for 62.9 million pounds, we have now captured the has potential to be special 21 year old. Still so young and at an 83 overall, he'll be a perfect impact sub off the bench. Can even play a left back. Just such a multi dimensional, multi faceted player. And in my eyes, he could be a real key addition. For a flat 145 million pounds, we have broke the bank and splashed the cash on Raheem the Dream Sterling. He's unveiled to the West Ham faithful as a marquee signing. A grand addition that is going to take us up to that next level. Level. We signed Sancho in season three. Now it's time for another huge arrival. Sterling makes the move from Manchester City and we are just killing two birds with one stone at the moment. Receiving a world-class player and also weakening our title hopefuls, Manchester City. So much we could do with Raheem right now. He's one of the world's best, of course. With Sterling as a new arrival, quality and depth, this team has buckets of it. And I thought, why not? Let's add one last finishing touch. That icing on top of the cake it is Scott McTominay in to shore up the midfield, the Scotsman arriving not from Manchester United, but from Bayer Leverkusen, the German outfit selling him for 54.2 million pounds. It could be a great backup for Declan Rice or even partner him in the middle and overtake Gilmore's spot in the center of the park. I don't know about you, if you ask me, that midfield is formidable. McTominay and Rice could be a deadly partnership. A decent baller, an upgrade to our midfield. I guess we can all classify that as a shrewd piece of business. It has been one of our most expensive seasons to date, spending over 400 million pounds. I love this for us. We made history with two of the top three most expensive transfers of the summer, Sterling and Robertson to West Ham, to join this British revolution. Here is your starting 11 headed into season four, and we are looking better than ever. With the deadly combo of Greenwood and Matueke, we've even converted Phil Foden to a backup center forward. An attacking option off the bench if we need it. Sterling has taken over Matondo's spot on the left-hand side. McTominay has overthrown Billy Gilmore. It's a half ex-Manchester United, ex-Liverpool defense with Robertson, Gomez, Maguire and Wamba Saka. I'm absolutely frothing at the mouth right now, just thinking what this team could achieve. I'm loving the looks of things. Let's get simulating because I have a feeling this could be our year, so I'll catch you all at the end of the season. To conclude season four, the British West Ham boys couldn't come out on top again and defend their Premier League title, losing out to Liverpool. Despite our antics and stealing Robertson off them, they still had no problems finishing on top. With 94 points to their name, we lose out by a six-point margin. Rounded up the top four with us is Spurs and Manchester United, Man City and Arsenal. Arsenal finish outside just like Chelsea. As we scroll all the way to the bottom, it is Brentford, Bristol City, and Blackburn Rovers getting relegated back down to the championship. In the FA Community Shield, we take that one home again. Just another two adds to the collection. It was a 5-4 win on penalties against Spurs. It was
was 2-2. Two -two. All right, then, not the first time we've done this, but an FA Cup final victory against Manchester City 2-1 at Wembley. And we came out on top of the big dance, quietly coming away from this season with a domestic double so far in the Carabao Cup. Okay, I'll take that little domestic cup treble. It was a 2-1 win over Sheffield United of all teams. And at Wembley, again, we seem to be proving the difference and really being a formidable force in London. Here is how their debut campaign got underway in the Champions League. Group B saw them drawn up against Roma, Dortmund and Galatasaray, so no easy group by any stretch of the imagination. Nonetheless, they breezed past with 18 points, finishing on top in the round of 16. They faced RB Leipzig and taught them a lesson with a 5-1 aggregate win, progressing through to face Liverpool. And on away goals, they come through with the 3-3 win. The Merseyside Reds thrown out of the competition and in the semi-finals, Barcelona were up next and they didn't know what were hitting them because our British West Ham lads have gone on to earn their spot in the big dance. It's a Champions League final awaiting them up against Bayern Munich. 2024 could be the year, people. It is a chance to reign supreme over Europe. It's time to finish what we started, but we're going to take a look at the squad we've assembled before we head into simulate slash play this match. We'll probably interactive match him the first half and then play the seconds. Here are some of our key performers. It is Jadon Sancho finally coming into his own and being an MVP of the team, a leader. 68 appearances. He scored 35 goals and 19 assists. Unbelievable stuff. 54 goal contributions, if I'm not mistaken there. And it's Mason Greenwood. He finished up second in terms of the overall rankings, but he still had a season to remember now up to a 94. I'm so glad we converted him into a striker with training. He has paid us back in dividends with goals, 34 goals and 14 assists. Raheem Sterling, his first season here at West Ham, and he managed to find that pocket on the left-hand side with 24 goals and 7 assists. Phil Foden, it was one of the most, you know, outlandish conversions yet. We pushed him up to a centre forward and off the bench, he managed to score 24 goals and 8 assists. Noni Madueke, the Englishman, only able to find 9 goals and 2 assists this season. Hopefully, he can try and bag a few in the Champions League final tonight with Andy Robertson, 8 goals and 6 assists from left back. Our captain, Declan Rice, with 17 goal contributions. Scott McTominay in the middle of the park with 4 goals. Aaron Wambasaka and Maguire with 2 goals apiece from defence. And Billy Gilmore still playing a part. The Scotsman with 2 goals and 3 assists. Aaron Ramsey played a little cameo in there despite his downgrades. And Damare Gray with one of his worst seasons to date. But I guess there are so many people ahead of him in the pecking order. Just like Rabi Matonzo. Not much we can do about that as the first team is pretty set in stone. Dean Henderson, our main number one. He's a star boy in between the sticks with 25 clean sheets in 68 appearances. In the process of four years, we've assembled a British super squad. Ranging from all talents from across the world. Uniting for one common goal. And they have shown what Britain has to offer. We still didn't sign some amazing players like Rashford, Harry Kane, Deli Ali. There were still so many exceptions and players that didn't even make the cut just because they were so expensive. Nonetheless, they go into battle tonight for a quest in order to take home the Holy Grail. It's the classic 4-4-2 Brexit ball to prove themselves on the European stage. Bayern Munich ain't no joke though, as we'll keep to our word and interactive match sim the first half, then jump in and play get in amongst the action for the second 45 as we have liftoff. An attempt to break the deadlock before the first half and thankfully the defense dealt with that. It is half time. We've entered the sheds at nil-nil and it's left the contest test wide open and it's all to play for in the second 45 minutes Mason Greenwood will get us kicked off and hold it on to possession but Jadon Sancho He's got a classic intervention in there. And Green will ball over the top. He eases past the Bayern defense. All Sancho needs to do is tuck it away. And Nicolas Sula got there in time. They're looking for a big physical presence. Who can win the header? It's John Stones. But David De Gea plucks it from here. It is Kingsley Coman. He scored in a Champions League final before. And we all know what happened there. Now the corner for the Bavarians. Can we keep it out for the time being? A lot of pressure being held on us right now. As it is Leroy Sane. Henderson needed to... Get the reflexes to that because it was a venomous header. And now the ball back inside. It's still not dealt with as Jadon Sancho manages to get it away. Big tackle from Rice. Oh my god. Oh no, we've still got it here with Greenwood. Hello. Noni Madueke again. Greenwood played back on the inside. It's Declan Rice with a scuffed shot straight at the Spaniard. Uh, he scored in the Champions League the final before as Raheem Sterling delivers on the inside. Mason Greenwood. McTominay finds it on the outside to Jadon Sancho. He's blistering pace. His acceleration and sprint speed outclassing 
the Bayern defense. Now Noni Madueke slips it through to Declan Rice. And it's an unlikely hero, but a welcomed one in the 86th minute when we needed a hero the most. The West Ham OG, the captain. He went from being Irish to English. He converted his nationalities just to play for the Brexit rebuild, the Brexit superstars. Britain's finest has gotten the job done. It was pretty jammy. We managed to work it through a bunch of legs as well. It was that first touch that really set him up for the perfect strike. And David De Gea left stranded. Joshua Kimmich can't contain him. And it's Serb ECHD on the sidelines, clapping a lot. Breaking the deadlock. And it's Declan Rice from CDM. His fourth goal in the Champions League. And it's been a stunning season for our big man with the armbands. I do believe it's a double substitution with Sterling off for Matonzo and Phil Foden replacing Mason Greenwood. You know with them two in the squad, things are going to get feisty. And we take this club to glory. Or a Bayern have one more chapter to write in this Champions League final fairy tale. As it is Madueke who spreads it out wide. This could be the ultimate double up. Matondo, ball on the inside. It is Phil Foden to finish them off. And that has been a sweeping, iconic counter attack. Our super sub. That's what we've been paid to do. Make those game changing switches. And it is the man who came on for Mason Greenwood. Getting amongst the goals. A well worked Fluid counter-attack. It's a well-oiled machine we have coached here at the British Rebuild at West Ham. And that is two hands on the trophy tonight. David De Gea couldn't do nothing about that one. And we go 2-0 up to secure the Champions League final dub. And it's so well-deserved. Bayern did all they could. They kept them out for so long. And you've got to applaud the Bavarians for their efforts tonight. But it's an all-British celebration here tonight as the Champions League victors in 2024. We've done it. And what a squad we have been able to build over this four-year period in a match. I thought was teetering towards extra time. We managed to get the job done and put that final blood, sweat and tears in the final act and what a performance it was. I just love our versatility with the nationalities, not just signing all English players, but switching up a little bit here and there. It has been done here at West Ham and I hopefully you guys did enjoy that one. Make sure you let me know down in the comments below what other rebuild challenges we could do. For FIFA 21, we're bringing it back, the classic series from FIFA 19. So if you did enjoy, make sure to drop a like down below, hit subscribe and turn on those notifications as we're gunning for 100k before the end of the year feel free to follow me on social media all the links are in the description but as always i've been sir bchd and i'll leave you with these stunning champions league final celebrations Yes, I did it all for love.